Today, we're going to discuss the fundamental and real reasons why gold and silver are going to start to rise. And it's not going to be a straight shot to the moon. I know some people like to hope for that, uh, but just be patient. It's coming. Uh, there's real reasons. This is, this is legal. Um, this is a global financial issue. And I'm going to get in and explain a little bit today exactly what's going on because it has been confusing. I think, you know, many people are frustrated when they see extraordinary inflation and they, they see the price of gold actually going down and price of silver going down and they're, they're just trying to understand why. Uh, but uh, the, today's going to really help, figure, help you figure all that out or at least understand why. I'm going to do my best to um, put the technical stuff aside and uh, try to keep the, the language um, so we can understand it. They, they like to use a lot of uh, fancy language in this, but this all revolves around the 2008 market collapse. And then they, of course, did the Dodd-Frank bill, and it was a banking realignment. And then there was something called Basel III. And Basel III was actually a big deal. And I know a lot of people hyped up when Basel III was supposed to be implemented that gold and silver should rise you know, dramatically right at that point, but that just wasn't accurate. That's not really fundamentally how it had to unwind. This was an unwinding. So first, let me explain Basel III. It was an international regulatory accord, and it introduced a set of reforms designed to mitigate risk within the international banking sector what it was doing was requiring banks to maintain, and this is the key, certain leverage ratios. And you're going to find out why that's important because the derivative market in gold and silver were way out of the norm of leveraged ratio. And all of that has to come in. And so the manipulation is going to be curtailed is why we're going to start to see this take place. But Today, I'm going to explain why or what's been happening over the year, and it'll give you some excitement to know why the prices are rising now and where they're going. But uh, it's, it was the leverage ratio. It was designed to keep certain levels of reserve capital, the cash on the bank, on hand. Now, this began in 2009 and is really still being implemented here in 2022, um, in the year 2020, this year anyway, 2022, it has been unwinding and it's going to the Bank of International Settlements, which is the central bank of central banks. The Bank of International Settlements is over in Switzerland. They don't uh, prescribe by any laws of any country and they even have their own police force. If anyone were to call them anything, it'd probably be the epicenter of the World Order Financial they are the central bank that basically kind of uh, talks to the other central banks. Um, some of the key takeaways of Basel III is its international accord that introduced a set of reforms designed to improve regulation, supervision, and risk management of the banking sector. Basel III is a literal step in the ongoing effort to enhance the banking regulatory framework. Now, this is a consortium of central banks from 28 countries. They devised Basel III in 2009, largely in response to the financial crisis of 08 and ensuing economic recession that happened. And as of 2022, it was in process of being implemented. And right now, as we're ending 2022, we are seeing the final unwinding. So what this was, was a multi-trillion dollar this is in the, the gold industry now. In gold, we were, the reason gold is only where it is now, I mean, gold should be thousands of dollars when it comes to the printing money and the inflation, but gold had a multi-trillion dollar unregulated derivative market. Same with silver. These were unregulated well, let me just say the CFTC and those who are supposed to be overseeing all of this um, are in bed with them. They just turned a blind eye. Uh, but the, this is a, a multi, multi-trillion dollar manipulation on gold and silver. They were selling gold and silver on paper for physical gold and silver they did not own. And that was keeping the markets down. It gets a little more technical 
Uh, but they knew they had to address this. They knew that the leveraged ratio, which was all part of the International Accord of Basel III, had to address the imbalance of the extraordinary derivative number manipulating gold and silver markets. So the BIS really had to clear the air. Again, the BIS is the Bank of International Settlements. The bank had to reconcile. They have to come to a leverage ratio in line with reserve, meaning they had to clear the books of these derivatives. Unfortunately, what they found out is that the BIS, while reconciling in dealing with all of this ratio, leverage ratio realignment, they found they were competing. Now, in order to do that, and when you have naked shorts, you had to go out and actually get the physical gold and silver. You had to actually get the physical, buy it, and get the real physical in order to cover your short position or pawn off your short position to somebody else. But what they found out while this year, while they were trying to do that, they were competing with central banks around the world. This year, central banks around the world have massively been buying gold, physical gold, and taking possession. That's why when you look at the COMEX, the actual registered physical gold holdings, it's not very large. They literally have been just taking it and it's disappearing. It's going to central banks and it's going into private sovereign funds around the world. But the BIS in this reconciliation found they had competition with other central banks and there was only so much gold and only so much silver in the physical world. That's what makes it a real valued asset. You cannot create gold or silver. Through alchemy, they've tried over the generations, but gold actually comes from, this is so, I just love this, but gold actually comes from the creation of a star. So when a star is going through its nuclear fusion and it is being born and it explodes and becomes a star, at that moment is where gold is actually created. So humans have never really been able to create gold. That's why you hear all the ancient stories of, of Sumerians and, and people coming down from the heavens, they could say. Um, it was, they were mining gold. The point is gold is so valuable because it only comes from a star. I thought that's kind of a pretty neat side note. But there's a, it's a finite supply. So there's only so much physical gold and so much real physical silver and so when you, when you start getting a lot of people wanting and needing it, it becomes a race to who can get their hands on it. And then, of course, those who hold it, like we the people, we're not going to relinquish it until the prices are substantially higher. And they know this. So this has forced the Bank of International Settlement to kind of repatriate gold to its owners from a 50-year naked short bet. So naked short just really means they were selling contracts on the futures exchange to short gold and silver, meaning they were betting the price to go down, but they were doing it with contracts and they didn't own the physical. So that's why they call them naked, because they don't actually have the physical. Now, in most financial worlds, we would all be arrested for manipulation, but somehow they got away with these naked shorts. But this all goes into what they call the net stable funding ratio compliance. I know that's kind of a big phrase, but they have to have ratio compliance according to Basel III. Well, the problem is, especially in the silver market, they had exchange for physical positions. We always call them in our industry EFPs. These are forced positions, meaning somebody who bought an actual silver futures contract that has 5,000 ounces attached to it, instead of settling it in cash, which a lot of traders would do because it was just really a trade, a lot more people were actually demanding the physical be delivered. 
Well, the Comex in America didn't really have the physical silver to deliver, so they were sending the EFPs over to London and having London fulfill the contracts. Well, here's a little twist to all of this, and it gets a little deeper. The Comex mainly got its silver from Mexico. Now, there's other supplies. I mean, Nevada, I mean, some in South America. But silver is a byproduct of a mine. It's, there's very, very rare silver veins and silver mines. Uh, silver is, typically comes from um, other, other mining, like gold, byproduct of gold or, or another copper or something else. The LBMA over in London really got most of their silver from Russia, well, now we have sanctions on Russia. The silver is no longer going to the LBMA. Now the LBMA is forced to compete with the United States COMEX for the Mexican silver. So I'm getting into a little more of the gold scenario here at first, but just know the silver is a real sleeping giant because the demand is ferocious because of electric vehicles, uh, solar cell panels, electronics, you name it, even though we're going through a, as you can call, a demand destruction type of global recession, you still have unbelievable demand on physical silver. And the demand in the, on physical silver for the last 15 years has been far more than we are mining and recycling, so we are depleting any supply that we have. So the sanctions on Russia was really designed. Now, this is where it gets kind of interesting. The sanctions on Russia, and the, they're, the West is in trouble. I think they really screwed up. I, this is my opinion, but I think they did. The Russians have about $300 billion in reserves in the central bank reserve system. The Europeans are trying to find legal ways where they can take that money to help rebuild Ukraine. I can just tell you right now, Russia's not sitting back and letting you take $300 billion. So there's a real big problem here for the West. But the sanctions on Russia was truly designed. It was a PSYOP. This is a psychological operation. This is a wartime type of behavior. And this was a true PSYOP to keep gold from becoming a safe haven asset because once the war in Russia broke out, the economy started faltering, gold should have been thousands of dollars an ounce. And so they needed to try to keep that from being a safe haven. It was a psyop to, to really try to crush every angle that Russia could have to preserve capital. I don't think what they counted on was Russia was going to sell all of its asset energy. Because remember, Russia has $70 trillion in natural resources they're now just selling them to more to China, India, and other Asian nations, uh, Middle East, uh, people that are not Europe and not North America. And so it's backfiring on the West. But this was a huge psyop. And what it was designed to do was cause the, the market system to go into a mode of shorting. They wanted the, the, the traders and the bankers to short gold and silver to keep the prices down, and the algorithms kind of walked the computers into that to where these traders would have to short. But then it, it basically started causing a huge short squeeze. And so all these people were shorting, but what was really going on is the BIS and other institutions were taking the real physical while speculators were shorting in the market. And a short squeeze are those who sell contracts for the price to go down. And there's, let's say there's 5,000 people who want the price to go down, but then everyone's taking the physical, forcing the price to go up. And so all those 5,000 people now have to find gold and silver to cover their short bet because short bets lose money when the price goes up. So you could go bankrupt if you're shorting something and the price goes up. So they've had to work real hard on dumping the short positions. The Bank of International Settlements mainly and some of these big banks 
They had to work real hard on dumping these short positions onto speculators. They kind of fooled them and tricked them into, but this is what the PSYOP was about, that the, they made the price, they manipulated the price of gold and silver to go down, forcing speculators like smaller traders, money managers, individuals to take short positions and join the party. But in reality, they were turning around and buying the physical from underneath them. And they were doing this by using the dollar strength to fool them. There's a bigger reason why they're raising interest rates and, and strengthening the dollar way beyond just to fight inflation, folks, because at the end of the day, raising interest rates are not going to fight inflation like people think because the dollar has been so diluted and so printed. We've printed trillions of dollars in the last couple of years, more than in the history of America existing. We've destroyed the value of the dollar. So even if they get done destroying all of these corporations and businesses and economies and all these layoffs that are coming, they will never be able to lower the prices significantly enough because the very paper dollar you're holding in your wallet just isn't very valuable. It's why getting a hold of gold and silver is going to be so important. What they've basically done is they've dumped that short position onto speculators, forcing them into an awkward position of getting out. And now we have created a scenario of bull market in gold and silver and is now truly by the dip market. They've tried really, really hard to get silver down to $20 and they just couldn't do it. And this is all option related as is all, you know, $20 was a sweet spot for the short position. And they, you know, the, these people are going to just have to book a loss. But if you notice when the price was gyrating like that in silver, they tried their hardest to get it down there and they just couldn't because the physical demand was just through the roof and people are just taking it out of the market system. But speculators really had not yet recognized the bullish setup. They were still caught in the idea of stock market rallying and the gold and silver are going to go down mode, but they were wrong. They were being tricked by the BIS and others. This is really causing a 2008 paper to physical disconnect, which is really huge. And many remember 2008, that was a very significant realignment almost a collapse of the entire financial system. But the disconnect of paper gold versus physical gold, and of course, same with silver, is enormous. They were at a point where they were selling silver at seven and 800 ounces on paper for every one real physical silver ounce for delivery. You want to talk about a disconnect, right? The paper market is unwinding. This is what the BIS has been doing. This is basically the Basel III forced compliance leverage ratio component. This is an unwinding, forcing the hand. They had no choice. This was a legal mandate, and it is all wrapping up right now. We will start to see the trucks backing up to the COMEX warehouses. They're going to do everything they can that the smart people anyway, to get a hold of physical gold and silver. And in the physical silver market alone in registered is only 34 million ounces left in the market. Now there's a lot of unregistered, but the unregistered is owned by IRAs, individuals, money managers. They're not selling. So they're going to have to be enticed to sell. And what's that enticement? It's going to be a lot higher prices. Silver is becoming extremely fungible. It's going to be extremely usable going forward. Fungible in financial terms means exchangeable. Silver will be ex easily exchangeable with other assets like gold or currency or bonds. Silver was never really that fungible before. Now, gold was. Gold was made tier one equal to currency and bonds. Silver is an industrial metal, but silver is becoming extremely fungible 
and very usable, especially with the Green New Deal going forward that the West is trying to force down the world's throat. You just If you knew the amount of ounces of silver needed for electric vehicles, you would understand, let alone solar panels and everything else, electronic in the green world, it all takes silver. That's why I think Elon Musk is probably one of those who are really taking big physical silver positions, um, and he just it's just part of doing business, so he's not out there vocally telling people. But many are not paying attention. If you're not getting silver for exchange or for barter or for money purposes, you're going to regret it. The banking system worldwide is absolutely in trouble. We talked about this back in the fall of 2019 when the system actually was collapsing in the reverse repo market. And that's uh, conveniently a virus shows up worldwide and then they start this phony baloney pandemic uh, restriction. But at the time, the banking system was collapsing. And so you really, really, really want to pay attention if you haven't. And I'd be telling people they're going to regret the day they knew they were told to buy silver in the 20s when silver's a lot more than 20 and it blows through 50 and beyond. They're going to look back and wish they did. Leveraged silver traders are more naked short. That's a problem for them. They're vulnerable, more vulnerable than ever because the gold reset mechanism of Basel III. See, Basel III is wrapped around the gold idea because gold was made tier one, tier one, which was equal to currency and bonds, meaning gold is money. Now, silver is the people's money. So silver is actually going to really, really appreciate because of the forced measures of gold resetting right now, especially for through this uh, whole Basel III um, closing or wrapping up. It comes down to registered or eligible. Again, the registered available is only like 34 million ounces in silver. Eligible is we, the people. We're not selling. They will need eligible people, however, to, to sell their silver to meet the registered COMEX needs. They're not going to let the COMEX default. The COMEX defaults, we, the whole system goes. I mean, they're, they're going to lose confidence in everything. They won't allow it. So you're going to see the banks, especially the BIS and others, going long, meaning they're going to be betting for the prices to go up. And now we mentioned this before, that the day was going to come when you will see they will be behind the prices going up because they're the ones in the physical position. It's that important. So they're going to get in position for the price to go up. Now, any more drawdowns in registered silver right now will force a huge silver short squeeze. And that's where you're going to see a pop. I would not be surprised we wake up one day and see silver up 3 to $5 an ounce. So if you ever do plan on doing it, you better not wait because that will be the day probably when you actually wake up and it's up $5 and you're going to kick yourself wishing you didn't do that. Um, in the end of the day, I wouldn't be concerned because you'll buy silver even if it's $50 or $60 just because it's real money. But this is a very important time. And remember, the SLV and the ETFs are an illusion of silver. They're not real. If you read the bylaws of the ETFs, they're allowed to be fungible, meaning they don't. They you think it's backed by physical silver, but it only has to be backed by a portion of physical silver, and the rest could be other assets. So it's a total scam. The illusion of silver in these ETFs, it's not the investment you want to make. They're trying to cover these short positions but they're being hampered by true physical demand. And I know firsthand, I'm in the industry, I'm in the supply chain, I'm in the refining, I know, I see it. And there is no doubt the demand for physical silver has been through the roof. And they have been trying to keep it tampered with these derivatives. But now that Basel III is playing out and winding down here, gold is going to start making its mark and silver is going to go along for the ride. 
So there's going to be a short squeeze in the silver market shortly as gold starts heading towards 2000 and above. The physical supply shortage is literally vapor thin. Folks, this is a perfect storm that is brewing. We are on the precipice of a worldwide financial system that is on the verge of collapse. They are over leveraged. They have more debt now than in the history the world has ever accumulated. You have economic conditions in China just crumbling. Europe is crumbling. The United States is rigged completely against you. And the whole world is getting ready to see this reckoning. During the time, and now this could be connected to the fourth turning. This could be connected to a lot of what the Great Reset is about. They need a plan because they know the system. It's a ship that is sinking. And I always like to put it, I'll kind of leave you with this. When there is a forest fire, you get out of Dodge and you wait and see what trees are standing. And that is where we're at right now. We have sinking ships, raging fires. They know this, by the way. They know it. And for you, for we the people, to position ourselves properly, and they still don't. I talk to them on a daily basis. Most people are like 10% of their portfolio. They're going to regret the day when they realize they underallocated gold and silver holdings. I would be easily 30% of my portfolio in physical gold and silver. And I don't care what anybody says because you mark the date. When the time comes, you're going to see it. And when you do, it's going to be too late. But it's coming. I'm in the industry. I see these numbers. Today was a real fundamental reasoning. It is laying itself out. This has been playing out for some time. Today, they, or this year, they were unwinding. It is getting set up. And if you don't have yourself properly positioned you're going to regret that day. We are going through a major, major overhaul of the world's financial system. And one of the safest places you can be during that time is physical gold and silver. So until next week, God bless each and every one of you. With all of the recent changes in the political and financial markets, there has never been a better time than right now to invest in silver and gold. When governments simply print billions of dollars in paper money in hopes of solving financial shortfalls, you know that it is time to buy and hold assets of true and lasting value. Free information is available to you right now by calling 888-747-3309. Whether you are a new investor or you're interested in preserving the value of your retirement accounts, we make it easy for you to make smart decisions for your financial future. The specialists at Cornerstone are here to serve you, work to satisfy your retirement goals, and communicate with respect. Call us right now at 888-747-3309. That's 888 888- 747-3309 or visit us online at cornerstoneassetmetals.com that's cornerstoneassetmetals.com